the Embassy of the Blessed Kingdom of God for all nations. The Embassy of the Blessed Kingdom of God for all nations is the largest evangelical church in all of Europe. Located in Kyiv, Ukraine, the church in its nine years of existence has seen more than one million people accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There are more than 20,000 members who regularly attend the church services. The social work of the Embassy of God is accepted by the Ukrainian government. During the next 30 minutes, you have the opportunity to encounter the living God. We believe this program will help you to develop your relationship with Him. Jesus forgives every sin, sets people free from addictions, heals every sickness, brings harmony to your family and prosperity to your business. Only God can bring a real solution to the situation you are in and give the answer to your every question. He can help you to fulfill the calling and destiny that is waiting for you. You are welcome to visit the Embassy of God webpage at www.godembassy.org or write us at tv at godembassy.org. You're watching the Embassy of God program. You're watching the Embassy of God program. Welcome to Finance and Focus. I am so blessed today and I'm excited about what's going to happen today. So I would say to you, listen, put this on record because this program is going to be so dynamic mm. and so prophetic. For so long I've been teaching the church for the last year and a half, two years, God is bringing a prophetic word to the prosperity message. God's bringing balance to the prosperity message. The prosperity message has been out of hand. And this is a word of correction. It's God telling his people, come on, it's time to grow up and it's time to wake up. Remember how many times I've said, you'll never receive a financial breakthrough to have a breakup in your thinking. Yeah. You will never have a life change until you have a mind change. And I'm blessed by my special guest today, Pastor Sunday. Pastor Sunday, welcome. Do you know, I went, I was along Marsham Street last night and yeah. I heard you preaching for the first time. Normally I come down on Friday, but I thought I'll come in the Thursday evening to Marsham Street and hear Pastor Sunday. And you were talking about prosperity. <laughs> yeah. And you were talking about the abuse of the prosperity gospel and yeah. what's been happening. Yeah. So tell me, Pastor Sunday, let's talk about this. Okay. Let's be prophetic to God's people because for so long, I felt almost like the silent scream of God's people when it's come to prosperity teaching in the church. So talk to me, Pastor. Brother Terry, thank you for inviting me to, to participate oh, in this program. Yeah. And it was a joy to meet you yesterday. And I was quite impressed by the fact that you are some of the few people that came up to me mm -hmm. and you actually made me to know that you've been saying the same That's thing. Same thing. And as if I've been uh, preaching out of your notes. <laughs> You've been listening to my tapes. <laughs> but you say it's the same spirit. Same Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Now, the abuse, you know, I'm charismatic mm -hmm. and I believe in prosperity. Yes. And I'm blessed as well. Mm -hmm. So I believe in the message and that God uh, is going to bless his people and he's giving us uh, money or he's giving us ability to make wealth so that we could uh, promote the gospel. Yes. But what we see yes. these days in the prosperity message as actually being an abuse. For example, the most popular misconception about pros biblical prosperity is that in most churches, people just tell you, give, 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 give. 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 Mm -hmm. So, and you shall reap, or whatever they say, <laughs> seed, and then you shall reap. And many people have been sowing, and, and they've been seeding, they've been planting yep. for so many years, and they're wondering, where is God? Exactly. Is this really true? Does this work? And then they are getting frustrated. And, but, you know, the thing about that teaching, that you get rich 
when you give or you sow mm -hmm. is that it is a half truth. truth. That's exactly what I've been saying. Not that something is wrong with mm -hmm. sowing and reaping. Not at all. But the problem is it's not the only point. It's mm -hmm. not the only thing that makes you to be wealthy. Mm -hmm. It's not the only point of prosperity. Mm -hmm. So sowing and reaping is just one point. Mm -hmm. For you to really get prosperity and to get wealthy, you need to know how to do some other things. Mm -hmm. Number one, you need to know that you cannot be poor physically until you are first poor in your mind. Exactly. So prosperity is a process mm -hmm. that begins from the mind and Amen. in the mind. Amen. So for example, if you want to help your people, and like pastors, most pastors want to help their people, and they say, you know, just give. No, and they never get rich. They never get the prosperity. Never. If you want to help them, first of all, begin to educate them. Absolutely. Because the man that gets rich, the only, it's only one group of people that get rich in the world. Yeah. It's not the people who pray to God. <laughs> That's why you see so many people who don't pray to God, and they, yet they are rich. Yes. Now, there, there, it's not, some people feel, if I'm a good person, then I will be rich. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry. No. So many bad people are wealthy. Absolutely. W while so many good people are not rich. Yeah. Now, some people think, well, if I could get a good education, Yes. If I could just go to school and do my PhD, mm -hmm. I'm going to be wealthy. I'm, yeah. I'm going to make it. I'm going to be prosperous. Well, I know so many people who are educated, who have degrees, and who have PhD, and are not wealthy at all. Mm. You see, you could just, they were just barely, barely making it. That's so right. education is not enough to be wealthy. Mm -hmm. Now, some people think, well, maybe if I'm in business, I, I'm, I'm going to be wealthy. I tell you what. So many people are in business That's in the right. UK mm -hmm. and they are not wealthy. So business itself is not a reason to be wealthy. And especially Christians, they think, if I could just pray enough or if I could just sow enough, mm -hmm. I would be wealthy. But it's not enough a reason. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the condition, mm -hmm. the paramount and the most important condition to wealth, to true prosperity, is that prosperity only comes to those people who know the laws of money. Mm -hmm. Amen. You must know how money works. As, and you must money. know how prosperity. So mm -hmm. anything is guarded and ruled by laws. Mm -hmm. So now, for example, one of the laws of prosperity is to sow and reap. But sowing and reap is not limited to giving money to individuals. Mm -hmm. Sowing and reaping, in my own understanding, is sowing money in a good field. It's investment. Yeah. Investment to me is sowing and reaping. Yeah. So when you invest your money, you actually sow. Mm -hmm. You could sow in a good ground, in a good business. Yes. You could buy shares. You could buy bonds. You mm -hmm. could you, you know, buy mm -hmm. uh, properties. That is sowing and reaping as well. But yeah, in yeah. churches, most pastors never tell you that. They tell <laughs> you just sow money to them. Mm -hmm. And most people have abused that wow. doctrine of sowing and reaping because they tell you to sow, and the only person you get to sow to is the man who is telling you to sow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, Pastor Sunday, I was teaching just a few weeks ago on this whole subject. And what you said last night, it blessed me because I was talking about there's no such thing as a get quick rich scheme and, and the Holy Spirit says yes there is those that are teaching it get rich yeah quick. they are the only ones who get rich. <laughs> and you mentioned that last night and you mentioned that this morning and do you know what you thought I was the only one that was teaching this eh? It's the same Holy Spirit, you know, and I'm so excited that Pastor Sunday is teaching the same message. Do you know, a few weeks as, as ago I said, I know by my spirit that God is raising up a new breed of churches, mm. a new breed of preachers and teachers that are going to bring this cutting edge, that are going to bring prophetic correction to the Word of God. And you know, Pastor Sunday is not just Pastor Startup. He's not just somebody that started up a few weeks ago. This man oversees a church of 25,000 people in the Ukraine, I believe. Yeah. That is an incredible ministry, Pastor Sunday. Yeah. So you're talking through a lot of experience oh, here. Oh, yeah. I have a club in our church in the Ukraine, a club we call Club 1000. Right. It's a club where I raise up. I've, I've got a vision of to raise up 1,000 millionaires, wow. Christian millionaires, and I'm going to do it. Amen. Not through the people who are already successful. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it by raising up people who are down and out, yes. people who are just middle class people, mm -hmm. and I'm going to teach them the principles so that they know that you don't, it's not because you are born, I mean, you are born into a, a particular family that makes you to be wealthy. No. It's not because you are lucky, that's why you are wealthy. Or it's not because some people are fortunate, chosen by God to be wealthy. Why so 
some other uh, chosen to be poor. I said, no, it is laws. Yes. Laws guard everything. God created everything and put them on laws. For example, to the, pro the second law of prosperity, apart from knowledge, apart from knowing the laws of, 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 of money, is that you must have a product. Yes. You must have a product for an exchange to take place. Mm -hmm. So prosperity only comes where there is the availability of a product or a service. Mm -hmm. So when there is a, an exchange of that service yes. or product, you get wealth in exchange of it. But in our churches, most of these preachers, prosperity preachers, don't even tell you no. how to perfect your gifts, exactly. how to, to produce any product at all, mm -hmm. or how to render services. And mm -hmm. they don't tell you to cultivate yourself, to develop yourself. Whereas, when you open Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible says God, when he, he mm -hmm. gives everybody his, uh, his own land, mm -hmm. and he gave Adam this garden and told him, Hey, I, although I'm your God, I could give you all money Come that on. I want, Amen. but still there is a law that functions Sorry. on the earth. Yes. Even though I love you, Adam, even though this is before the fall, even though this is before Satan came, even though this is before, exactly. before sin, he still told Adam, he said, you've got to work, my friend. You, you, <laughs> you've, been, you've been written by birds already. <laughs> This man's preaching my sermons. That's the first chapter I talk about, about Adam. The first job gave, do you know what the first commandment is? To work. To work. To work. That is the first commandment of wow. God to Adam. He said, hey man, so okay. you've got the territory, now get down to work. But nobody is telling guys in the church about that. They're exactly. just telling you, just bring them money. Exactly. But the only guy who gets up, who ends up being rich, is the preacher you're giving the money to. <laughs> so you see all these preachers coming in gold yeah. and in chains and in all the suits, and they tell you, give, 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 and you keep on giving to them. Yes. And they don't work. <laughs> they don't... only talk you to you to bring money to them. Oh my goodness. And it's unfortunate. So God says, till the ground. Now, work tilling it. the ground, work it, it means to work it, it means to develop it, it means to cultivate it. You're watching the Embassy of God program. For you to really be effective and to be productive in any area of life, you've got to develop yourself. Develop yourself by getting knowledge, yes. by getting skills. Mm -hmm. Develop your gifts and abilities. Identify what you have in you. Then you've got to cultivate. Cultivate your ground. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing to work for God. Mm -hmm. Because when you cultivate and you develop yourself and you discover yourself, you begin to realize that you could actually do more than you could do. Then when you cultivate the ground, you begin to discover things that are hidden in the ground. Wow. So there are callings for you and there are things hidden. Because when when uh, the Adam was placed in the Garden of Eden, then he discovered that there was gold in the sure. land. Mm -hmm. Then he discovered there were precious stones in the land mm -hmm. because he was cultivating it. Mm -hmm. He was tilling the ground. Then God said, keep it as well. Mm -hmm. You know, build, build wow. structure, systems that will help you to defend whatever you are making. Not just hope, I'm saying because I'm praying and I'm good, I'm not sleeping around and I'm not smoking and I come to church, I pray, God will just bless you. Well, God doesn't send money from heaven. No. That will make him a counterfeit. Absolutely. He doesn't send money That's from right. heaven. Mm -hmm. He says, yeah, give your tithe, give your offering and that I will open the windows of heaven. But then windows of heaven doesn't mean it's going to rain down money on you. It doesn't produce dollars over there. <laughs> what he does when he opens the windows of heaven is that he rebuilds the devourer for your mm -hmm. sake. He blesses you with opportunities. The, one of the greatest blessings you could have to be wealthy is for open doors to be given to you. Mm -hmm. Opportunities is one of the greatest things you could yes. have. Number two, God gives you ideas. Number it's three, God thoughts. gives you health. Mm -hmm. Number four, it gives you peace. Number five, it gives you connections. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that God will provide for you. He creates for you and gives you the environment for you to be able to be productive. You see, everything God says he will go do for you is not giving you cash. That's he right. says in Deuteronomy that he will give you mm -hmm. the power. power to create. So you have the power, but you've got to create wealth. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Now, are you enjoying this stuff or what? This is fantastic stuff. Do you know, Pastor Sunday, I am so blessed to hear a man of God teach like this because for so many years I've been involved in business and ministry trying to teach the charismatic church. The first thing I say at my seminars is the charismatic church needs a brain. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's my <laughs> opening comment, uh, and it shocks people. You know, we the charismatic church want the prophecy of the end result, but they don't want the prophecy of the mm, process. Mm. And we, the charismatic Pentecostal theology has produced spiritual sluggards, people not working, and people over spiritualizing everything. Right. They want to rebuke devils and yeah. pray over bills, and you know they don't <laughs> want to go and work, and and they claim it's Jehovah Jireh, and it's Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to the post office to claim their gyro. They're not working. And the first commandment is to work. And, you know, God will give us ideas and ability to create wealth. Do you know, can I just say this to you, Pastor Sunday? There are so many people watch this program and have watched me. There's a lot of Afro-Caribbean people watch this program. And I've been to so many seminars and my heart breaks for the Afro-Caribbean people because I have watched them being abused by the prosperity teacher yeah. about, you know, Psalm 91, so 91 dollars, or, you know, Psalm 23, <laughs> so 23 pounds, so 46 pounds, you've got a double anointing. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so many people get caught up in this. And, you know, in the world, in the banking system, I was sharing this with Howard Condor, in the banking system, their main goal in the world system is to keep us oh, ignorant. Yeah. They make millions of pounds yeah. from our ignorance. Yeah. And I believe there's so many ministries today that want to keep their church mm -hmm. and their people ignorant. Because the more you grow and the more you know, you'll start to understand that this is infantile stuff you've been taught here. Can you, can you give a word to the Afro-Caribbean church in this nation? I believe you've got a sound word and a prophetic word to challenge them and to grow up in the area of finances? Well, the problem with uh, people in developing countries, especially people from Africa and the Caribbeans and from uh, third world countries like yes. Latin America, yes. is not just in the fact, of course, they all have the general problems that uh, the that the uh, people, every, the poor people everywhere have, yeah. that is lack of knowledge. Yes. But apart from lack of knowledge, the people from Africa and from developing countries that I know, they want to live an affluent life. Yes, they do. Lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now, because they come to Europe, mm -hmm. they see all these gorgeous buildings and then you want to get a good car. You want to live in a big house immediately. Now, that tells us, also leads us to another law of money. One of the greatest way to come to wealth is not by making a lot of money. One of the greatest and quickest way to get to wealth is actually by economizing. Mm -hmm. by minimizing your expenditure and expenses. Now, if only the man that has the ability to minimize his expenses and expenditure will actually be rich. Yes. If you cannot, if you don't have the ability to cut your appetite and to reduce your expenses, and if you want to live big when you are not yet big, yes. if you don't know how to cut your coat according to your size, mm -hmm. in fact, the, the, the first step in prosperity is to begin to reduce your so actually it's, it is not the man that makes the most money every month that 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 gets rich so the man that makes a i can show you a man that makes a million dollars a month that if, let's say a hundred thousand dollars a year that it, it might not be rich, mm -hmm. even though he's making a hundred thousand. Yes. Even if he makes it's a million cheaper. every year, it's, it might not be rich. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you and show you a man that to make ten thousand, twenty thousand a year still can be rich. Yes. So our people are not being taught mm -hmm. to actually put the money, I mean the loss of money into force. Like for example, if you come to in Britain, eighty percent of the shoes are being bought by Afro Caribbean people. Right. Shoes and clothes. Right. Now, the problem is because we have big taste for spending. Mm -hmm. We have a flair for t spending. Mm -hmm. But you can never be rich that way. Even if they are paying you, even if you have three jobs mm -hmm. and you are making a hundred or two hundred thousand a year because you are spending yeah, it all. Living to that lifestyle. Yeah, you are giving them out. Yeah. Because you are being driven by your lifestyle. You will never be rich. The only way to be rich is for you to reduce, to actually spend more. I mean, to actually spend less yes, than you are required to spend. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in my church, I teach my people to always save between 10 to 30% mm -hmm. of their monthly income. Absolutely. They said, how do we do that? I said, do anything you want. Just save it. Just do it. Just do it. You only need to spend more, more I mean, the money on the 
on the things that are absolutely essential for yes. you to live. So save, if you cannot save 30%, save 20%. If you cannot save 20%, save 10%. Then after saving it, put, into, put it to work for you. Your Invest it mm -hmm. and do that every, for the next 10 years. Yes. And you will see that you'll never be poor again. Mm -hmm. But if you just want to begin to live big without even making you know, the rich people, they don't, we see that they are having big cars and things like that, but they are spending only the money coming on their money. Yes. They are not spending their basic money. In fact, there is, that takes us to another law of money. Money is never to be spent. That's what people are not told. Money is never to be spent. That, and I found that in Matthew 25. Yes. Money is supposed uh, to be accounts. multiplied because Jesus yeah. gave the talent out. And you, the have talent been listen, you have been listening to my season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the talent was money. Exactly. And Jesus said. That was the context. Yeah, it was money. It was money. Yeah. It was a pure money. Mm -hmm. And God commended the man that the two men that multiplied it right. but the man that kept it mm -hmm. was rebuked by Jesus Absolutely. and was actually condemned now yes. that man that that was condemned by Jesus is much better than most people in our churches today you yeah. know because that at man at right? least yeah. he kept it he never <laughs> spent it yeah so any money that comes to your hand the first thing you should do with it is not to spend it. Mm -hmm. The first thing you should do with it is to find a way of multiplying it. Yes. So for example, if I have a hundred pound come into my hand, even if I need to pay my rent and I need to pay my tithe, okay, I could spend 80% of it, but I must have at least 20% left that I will multiply to give me the 80% back that I've spent. Amen. And to give me another more 80% that I've spent. So that way, I've not spent the mm -hmm. 100 pounds. Yeah. I've increased the 100 pounds. Exactly. So we should find, we should teach people that the way, the first law of money is not to spend money. And you know, if people are not taught that way, money is like a God. Money comes to your hand and begins to dictate to you. Yes. So for example, a man that never had a thousand pounds is, is dreaming. If I, will, if I could only have a thousand pounds, if I could only have a thousand pounds. So as soon as he gets a thousand pounds, he's driven. He already knows where to spend it. He's going to spend it immediately because money becomes his God. Yes. Money is dictating to him and he obeys the command of money. Now that tells us about another law of money. Never obey the command of money. Become the Lord of money. The, first, the second thing you need to do when money comes to your hand is that just keep it. Make sure that you see money lying in your pocket or lying in your house or in your bank account and you are not driven to run or at a scatter <laughs> to begin to spend. Just make it lie down as, as if it's not, it's, it loses value to you, as if it's not of value to you. That way you are getting a hold of it. You are becoming the Lord over it. Amen. So, but if you just listen to all the dictates, oh, you need to go and pay for that, you need to bless that person, you need to do that, you need to show off, you need to buy that, then you are becoming a servant to money. Amen. So the ability to, to, to control yourself when money comes to your hand is one of the greatest uh, weapons to, 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 to control money. Wow. And then don't spend it. Go, no, you could spend the ones you need to spend, but make sure you have enough to multiply, yeah, to compensate and bring back what you have spent. Mm -hmm. So then, then invest it. That's what we mean by mm -hmm. spend it. Sow it, not in another man of God. Another. Go sow it. <laughs> you could sow a little in man of God if you want, but the basic thing, do something with it that will bring back and will multiply what you originally got. It's interesting when Jesus says you can't serve God and money. He doesn't say God and the devil. No. That's interesting. Jesus says you cannot serve God and money, and both are competing yeah. for our attention and for our devotion. That's what I teach my people. There are only two gods in this world. Mm -hmm. It's not God and Satan, mm -hmm. it's God and money. Mm -hmm. So we have people coming to our churches. You know why they come? They come for a breakthrough. Yes. They come to get prosperity. They yeah. come to get healing. They come to get <laughs> material things of this world. So they're actually being driven up by God. Oh my goodness. They are being driven. So we think they are worshippers of God. Yeah. We think they are coming to worship God, but really they are worshipping idol of self gratification. Oh my God. Or money. Man. So you are either motivated by one of two things in the world. Mm -hmm. In life, you are either motivated by God. Is mm -hmm. it because you want to glorify God? That's why you are going to that Amen. business. Because you want to glorify God, that's why you are doing that profession. Because mm -hmm. you want to glorify God, that's why you are going to that school. You are getting educa education. Mm -hmm. You are going to fast. You are going to pray. Because yes. you want to spread this kingdom. It's either that way or 
you are being motivated by the desire to make it, yeah. by the desire to make money, by the desire to be big, by the desire to get a job. Yes. If you are being driven by those things, you are actually a slave to whoever you are, or whatever you are giving yourself to. So you become a slave to your desires. You become a slave to money. So the God of your life really is not God Almighty. He's the oh, God of money. Oh my goodness, that's just It's a tragedy. <laughs>